Once again, you're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm your host, William Cooper. Are you one of the people who believe that everything that's happened through history is an accident? Well, listen to this, folks, and listen very carefully. Those desiring substantial evidence of the unfoldment of the great plan should follow the suggestion inscribed upon the monument to Christopher Wren in St. Paul's Cathedral and gaze about them. The rapid advancement in the social and political states of man, the increasing richness of human living, and the broadening vision toward individual and collective responsibility herald with auroral colors the rising of the sun of truth. There is much yet to be accomplished, but already the achievement is impressive. Even the most devout humanist cannot survey the orderly progress of the race and at the same time deny the existence of a well-integrated program. The light of the ancient Vedas is slowly but surely illuminating the whole world. The vision of man's noble destiny and the sacred sciences which made possible the realization of that vision have been guarded and served by the silent ones of the earth, the priesthoods of the sacerdotal colleges, the hierophants of the mystery schools, and the adept masters of the secret societies have been the guardians of man's noblest purpose, the perfection of his own kind. Vast organizations, industrial, political, social, and educational, have been made possible by the modern life way. These have become the molders of public opinion, feared or respected according to the measure of integrity revealed in their management. The future of human society is intimately associated with the destinies of these vast enterprises which have inherited, along with physical success, the duty, or more correctly, the privilege of world guardianship. There is every indication that the esoteric tradition will next function through that complex of vast interrelated organisms of production and distribution which now dominates human imagination. While this structure may appear to the superficial minded as heartless and soulless, it is also the largest and most powerful potential instrument for the advancement of mankind ever yet devised. Education, science, and economics are today indivisible. They have already formed a partnership for their mutual advancement. Equipped with knowledge, skill, and the necessary physical resources, this huge combine awaits the destiny for which it was intended. Progress is not bound inevitably to any nation or people. Social and political structures are instruments for the advancement of the great work only to the degree that they keep the faith. If ambition or selfishness breaks the bond, the privilege of guardianship is forfeited. And this does not mean that the project fails. Rather, that which fails, the project, loses the privilege of leadership. The plan, then, passes to the keeping of other groups and other ages. Man cannot destroy or pervert the works of destiny. He can only divide himself from those works and by so doing cease to share in the essential vitality of progress. Thus it is that unreasonable doubts and fears concerning providence are philosophically unsound. Failure is always regrettable, but principles do not fail, and that which is foreordained perfects itself. Although empires may collapse, great teachers be martyred, schools and systems perish, and enlightened leaders remain unhonored, the substance of the great work remains unchanged and unchangeable. New vehicles appear even as the older ones are betrayed by human selfishness. The eternal commonwealth, 
is an assignment of destiny and spiritual progress symbolized by the fabled phoenix rises victoriously from the ashes of the human ruin. The adept tradition has always available social instruments waiting to be ensouled with the larger vision. All things created by men are mortal and destructible. But the way destined by heaven is immortal and indestructible. Universal enlightenment and universal fraternity are the natural ends which reward the social struggle. The world and all that inhabits it are moving triumphantly toward peace and security. At any given time the vision may be obscured, but in the larger dimensions of time all things work together for the fulfillment of the greater good. Is that a piece of excellent retrospective writing looking back on history? No, ladies and gentlemen, it is not. For this was written by Manley P. Hall in Los Angeles, California, in April of 1951. What he predicted is what is happening. A wedding, a marriage, between the corporate world and the state, which is coming. He's talking here about socialism, humanism, the concept that man will become God. And the new religion will change with the needs of man, not man conforming to the laws of God. Manly P. Hall was an adept, a highly degreed fact. He was a 33rd degree Freemason, may have held many, many other degrees in the secret societies of mystery Babylon. He was a priest of the order. 